the examiner will uh, give us a sentence like this. For example, you have uh, uh, I have I would have spoken the truth if you have asked me okay now uh, in the first class i told you that there are three different type of sentence completion exercises that will come into the test one of the uh, sentence completion exercises where you have one underlined part and then you will have a number of options for example option a will be the same if you feel that the underlined part is the same you will choose a but if you feel it is different for example b or c or d or e now we need to see that which one of the option is correct if such kind of sentence comes into our entry test uh, if we go to the earlier example, you might have noticed that we use would, have, and then third form of a verb. Basically, uh, I'll, I'll be telling you this uh, the name of this particular structure as well. But uh, let's first go with the example. With would, we are using have, and then we are using third form of the verb. These are two parts of a sentence. This is one. And that is the other one. You need to remember that if a sentence has construction like this, and if it is start, if it is starting or having if with it, then in one part we use would plus have plus third form of verb. On the other part, what will we use? Can we use have and first form like the option one, or has and as? uh this has cannot be suitable here because we are using subject of you with you we use have not has has come with he she or it like third person singulars when we use them we use has and see have us again this is almost the same except that as here is the third form of a verb over here. And D, it is had asked, which is past perfect, and E is having asked, which is a continuous form. Having cannot be used here because if you want to use ing form, you need to use some helping verb as well. Maybe is MR or was word or have been, like have been, uh, for example, like have been having. Uh, in this particular case, we need to see that option D, which is basically past perfect, is the suitable choice. Why? Because in one of the part we use would, have, and third form of a verb. In the other part, we use simple past perfect. Uh, we can see that there is a certain uh, formula to this structure and uh, we call such kind of sentences conditional sentences basically there are three conditions and there is one more which is called zero conditional uh, which is uh, a bit different this structure particularly this structure is conditional sentence type three You need to 
keep in your view that if we have this particular structure of conditional sentence type 3 it will have two parts okay these two parts of sentences are called basically clauses okay a clause is a uh, group of sentence uh, group uh, which is uh, uh, which is with subject and predicate okay so in a clause you must have a subject and a predicate in this case there are two clauses i would have to spoken the truth this is one clause if you had asked me that is another clause and both of these clauses have subjects like i and you over there and would have spoken verb and had asked verb here okay so in conditional sentence type 3 we have would plus have plus third form of verb okay this is with the first part of it and then we have in the second part uh, it could be joined with some conjunction you know, especially if and then we have past perfect So uh, we can say that uh, you put subject, would, have, third form of verb, and then, of course, subject and plus, past perfect. One more example I would give that can help you understand a bit easily the same idea. Uh, you can say also, if I had scored higher I would have achieved a scholarship okay now this has two parts again one and two and interestingly, all the conditional sentences, uh, we can change the place of clauses. I can say I would have achieved a scholarship if I had scored higher. That is possible. Okay. So you can start your sentence with if clause, as we call it, or the main clause, as we call it. It is if clause because it is starting with if and main clause because, uh, uh, but we call it main clause. Uh, there is a reason for it uh, that in such kind of sentences, if we want to separate them, okay, then one of the piece would give complete meaning, the other piece would give half meaning. So the piece which will give full meaning is called main clause like i would have achieved scholarship you can say i would have achieved scholarship because uh, that's it is no harm uh, the sentence is complete it is giving the complete meaning but if you say if i had scored higher if i had scored higher so what you know you feel that something is missing you had to add something into it so you say if i had scored higher i would have achieved the scholarship but if you say uh, i would have achieved scholarship fine no problem with that so if clause we um, technically speaking i don't want to be uh, make it you know so hard on you but uh, technically we also call it dependent clause and we call it independent clause dependent because this is depending on the other part but the other part can stand on its own. So this conditional sentence type three, <clears throat> with if clause, you have past perfect. That is past perfect. Okay. And <clears throat> with main clause, you have would. There is also a possibility that sometime could maybe use at the same place. Okay, so, uh, but that won't make any difference. 
plus half and plus third form of power. Okay. 